Hello and welcome to the fourth and the final episode in our series on PCOS or Polycystic Ovary Syndrome or PCOS. The first video was on the diagnosis of Polycystic Ovary Syndrome, the three pillars and three steps if you remember. The second was on the risks and consequences of Polycystic Ovary Syndrome. The third on the management of reproductive implications of polycystic ovary syndrome. And this final video is on the management of non-reproductive consequences of polycystic ovary syndrome. And these include metabolic consequences, dermatological consequences, and psychological consequences. Let's start with metabolic consequences. These include insulin resistance, diabetes, as well as the consequences of hyperandrogenism, for example, hirsutism or excessive hair growth. Let's look at the management. The first line treatment for irregular cycles and hyperandrogenism is lifestyle advice plus the combined oral contraceptive pill. It's important to use a low dose pill with ethanol estradiol doses of 20 to 30 micrograms. And of course, cosmetic treatments have a role to play with conditions like hirsutism. Let's now move on to second line treatment, but for those with diabetic risk factors, for example, a body mass index of more than 25. In such patients, Again, the first step is appropriate lifestyle advice, but with that, you can give metformin. Now, you may or may not want to add the combined pill to that. That recommendation is a second-line treatment for those at risk of diabetes. What about second-line treatment for those with androgen excess? So, for example, a history of hirsutism. Again, lifestyle advice is cornerstone for such patients. But in addition to that, you would want to give the combined oral contraceptive pill and consider anti-androgens. And obviously, cosmetic treatment would have a role too. In the previous video, we did discuss what we meant by lifestyle changes, but let's just recap it here. So we are aiming for a body mass index less than 30, but the actual target will need to be set with the woman taking into account her needs and preferences. One should aim for 5 to 10% of body weight being lost perhaps over six months. That would be reasonable in most instances. Exercise needs to be 150 to 300 minutes per week which roughly translates to half an hour per day. And a single bout of aerobic exercise should at least be 10 minutes in duration. And of course, balanced diet is important. The key issue here is that the goals and targets should be co-developed in partnership with the patient who's got polycystic ovary syndrome. Okay, let's now move on to the management of dermatological consequences of polycystic ovary syndrome. The first step in the management is, of course, is a thorough assessment. In terms of excessive hair growth, that is hirsutism, modified ferryman galway score is the one to go for. In terms of hair loss, you have the Ludwig or Olsen visual score. In terms of acne, there is no universally accepted assessment tool, but you need to make a detailed account of it. If there is a history of rapid onset of any of these problems, then you need to consider the possibility of androgen secreting tumour. Let's now look at the first line and second line treatment for dermatological problems. First line treatment unsurprisingly starts with lifestyle intervention combined with the combined oral contraceptive pill. You can add cosmetic measures to it, including, for example, laser. If this first line approach doesn't work, 
then we move on to second line treatment. And that would include, again, a lifestyle intervention, combined oral contraceptive pill, and anti-androgens. In terms of anti-androgens, you could consider spironolactone, cyproterone acetate, or finasteride. You need to make sure that the patient doesn't have any contraindications and warn them about the side effects. Let's move on to the final non-reproductive consequence that we will look at, which is to do with psychological consequences. These include weight stigma, anxiety, depression, body image disorders, sexual disorders, eating disorders, and sleep disorders. The key issue here is to be aware of these risks and screen the patients for them. For many of these conditions, there will be validated tools that would be used in your own setting. Find out what they are and use them. It is important to screen for risk of self-harm and suicidal intent. Management should be tailored to the diagnosis. That brings us to the end of this lecture and indeed the end of this series. We hope you found this series useful. And if you did, please do give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Until we meet again in another video or at our weekend course, goodbye. <laughs>